Welcome to the Droids You Are Looking For Canada on Facebook, on Twitter, now on G+, and the podcast starts now. This is blasphemy! This is madness! This is Droid Talk! Its arrival changed us forever. Great cities were built on Mars and Venus. Mercury became a garden world. Human lifespan tripled. It was a time of miracles. We stared out at the galaxy and knew that it was our destiny to walk in the light of other stars. But the Traveler had an enemy. A darkness which had hunted it for eons across the black gulfs of space. Centuries after our golden age began, this darkness found us. And that was the end of everything. That is, until I found you. always known the darkness would return. To finish what it started. To take our home. That's why I've been looking for you. For centuries. There are only a few of you carry the light of the Traveler, who have the strength to fight the darkness. I'm not going to lie to you, Guardian. You are Earth's last hope. Get rated. So Rick is back again. I better grab the microphone a little bit closer this time. Rick is back again. Want to know what we're talking about? What are we talking about? Um, Chinese midgets. Chinese. Is there such thing? I'm sure there are. Hold on, I'm googling this shit. <laughs> Just be careful what you type. You can't really screw up Chinese midgets. Yeah. Is your safe search on Google? There is Chinese midgets. Why wouldn't there be? I just just it just never happened. 
Oh, that's a really creepy one. The shoe is pretty big. <laughs> it's like, he's kind of like, it's. Oh, oh, that's right. That's right. There was a Chinese midget in. I think it was Dr. No. Or. I don't remember. It was a James Bond film. Now I remember. There was a Chinese midget. But no! Fantasy that's not. Island. That's what? Fantasy Island. Oh, the yeah, plane, the plane. Uh, them and their sausage fingers. Anyways! Rick is here to talk about Destiny, the beta, which I missed. Oh, I can't believe I missed the window for the beta of I, Destiny. I kept telling you. Uh, I know, but it was a very busy weekend in my life, and I was doing everything as humanly possible and trying to fit everything into one schedule. <sighs> it just didn't happen that way. So, is there a storyline? Like, what What is Destiny, I guess, would be the first question. Okay. Um, they do show a little bit of the storyline. Uh, pretty much it is post-apocalyptic. Uh, the Earth, as well as other planets, has been decimated by... The, they're, they're kind of robots, but they're like biomechanical. Like Terminator robots? Like, I don't know, give me something to work with here, Rick. I can see I can't for the life of me think of what they were called. They're I don't know, they're kinda like they're more like Resident Evil kind of biomechanical. Resident Evil biomechanical, like the bioterrorism shit. They are like they're robot alien things that have tentacles and guns and oh, I'm gonna really go. Yeah, you're going to have to go Google that, because you're just really putting a lot of thought behind that. And if I can, I know you're in Arizona, but I can see the smoke from here. Sorry, buddy. You're kind of catching on fire. That happens. So, okay. Gotta so. be prepared, Rick. What's happening? Let's go to Wikipedia. God. No, we're actually a little bit more prepared. It's just really hot where Rick is right now. It is. It's 110 degrees right now. Hard to think. Double check, so. Very hard to think. It's pretty hot where I am, too. It's, uh... What is the temperature here? I don't even know. Well, Don, I will tell you, because it's not really podcast relevant, but I'll tell you anyways. Uh... Yeah. Okay, so there's various species that are going through. Um, they're called the Fallen. Okay. And they are... I really don't know how to describe them. Uh, they're, they're just... They're like aliens that have robotic parts to them. Okay. okay. Fair enough. They're very, human, they're very humanoid looking, but still they're aliens with biomechanics. That's the best way to describe them. <laughs> so, uh, I, so what is there? I, I guess so. You don't really get to touch the storyline that much. So, most I'm going to guess that this was all about the multiplayer. What you were playing? Um, well, for the most part, I mean, you're going through and you're doing missions. Uh, this was the beta, so this was their MMO testing. Um, how much load can they take? Make sure they can, you know, handle. Whenever you go to what's called the tower um, you walk around this is where you it's, it's your home base this is where you buy weapons you upgrade things you do de deciphering of different things that the aliens drop whenever you go there you will run into I ran into at one point like 50 different people who were all playing so being that it's an MMO, you go through and you do the levels, there's usually random people who are doing the same level with you. That's pretty insane. So, there was a lot of interaction, and obviously it was busy because I, I honestly was getting annoyed at some point because there was a lot of people that were handing out uh, free beta codes to join the, the crew, and I just, I don't know, I just it, maybe it's because everyone kept bugging me and that's why I didn't play it. But it wasn't until the Sunday when I tried to download it and it was already off. That was kind of depressing. Um, 
a little tidbit of knowledge, which I'm not sure if you knew, but I want to blow your mind anyways. The, one of the composers of this game was Paul McCartney from the Beatles, if you did not know. Which I is did. actually kind of cool. Yeah, I did know that. That is pretty cool. I didn't even see that coming. I was like, really? So, from what you played... So, more or less, the beta was all about to prove uh, how much the MMO can hold, um, how many people it can run with, um, everything to that effect, I guess I would say. Pretty much. I mean, you got to make your characters. There's four characters, or four classes of character. Um, you had your titans, which are basically your muscle bounds. You had your wizards, which had different abilities that you could, like, blast people away from you, and you could, like, launch fireballs, kind of little Hadouken. Um, hmm. There, there were you had your you had your three different classes. Your sorry, I said four before. You had your three different classes. You could have up to three characters in the beta. I'm sure you could have more. I'm sure, you could have more. But I think it was just like a, the test phase, just to see what would happen. Right. Yeah. It was just. I, and for the most part, they were just testing, making sure, checking the. Uh, uh, they even have a thing that Saturday at 6 o'clock Eastern Time, or between 2 and 6 o'clock Eastern Time, they wanted everyone to log on uh, just so that they could test their loading. And for, for doing so, you got a patch that you could actually uh, get to use in the real game. Okay. So, from what you've played thus far, what would, what would be the best description you can give of about the gameplay? Was it fluent? Was there any issues? Well, I mean, being that it was a beta, it, it had its glitches. It wasn't too bad. Uh, there were things that you could walk up to that you're like, oh, this is cool, but you couldn't use it because it was a beta. Um, the first time I logged in, it crashed on me like three times. Again, though, this is all stuff you expect from a beta, but going in to the, like, doing levels, everything like that. I, at one point, had a three-party team. Um, it was me, Randy, and another buddy that we went through and did, like, four or five levels. And they were a couple levels up for me. So the, the bad guys the were... Their levels were higher than I was. So I wasn't actually killing anyone. But since it's an MMO, everybody shares the experience. So I leveled up really quick. Okay, that kind of sounds like I think it was Dead Island that we were doing that too. So that kind of that works out as well. Um, what was your favorite thing from the game? I guess if you had to pick something that would attract you to, like, you know what, I need to own this game. If that makes sense, what would that have been? I liked the weapons management system. Uh, anytime you push start, you can go into your weapons management. Now the game still goes on, so if you push start, it does not pause. You will still die if someone is shooting you. Typical, you know, online MMO. But you can go in, you can literally change your weapons on the fly. So rather than having to, you know, push your select and then go through, I'm thinking like Borderlands. And you end up having to do all this different stuff to try and, you know, re-equip yourself. You can literally push start, go over to the left, click on this piece, you've got a new weapon. So I could switch between my shotgun, my handgun, this, very, very quickly. So the weapons management was very nice. You can jump between armors. You can upgrade armor. Uh, there's abilities that you can give. Armors are specific they have specific abilities that help different weapons. So there wasn't a lot that we got to see in there or that I got to see. I only got to level 8 with my character. But it looks like there's a huge area that for like weapons expansion everything like that. So it it's Now it, I'm just going sorry. Um, so now, if you had to say, like, is this is going to be something that you'd want to play on the next gen consoles, because I know it's a multi console release, but graphically, it's been proven that these type of games are pretty much made for the next gens, but they're just trying to put it on the lower grade 
um, systems just to make a quick buck. So is it worth it getting on PS3, or would this be something that you should just go to a PS4 or an Xbox One? Really, the only advantage I think you're going to get with a PS4 or an Xbox One is the like the backgrounds, your environments are going to be more detailed. Uh, than they are going to be on the PS3. I did it on PS3. I thought it still looked gorgeous. Everything was nice. It was clean, um, especially for being a beta. Everything was clean. Everything was neat. Uh, there was some good detail. Your weapons, it, other than you know, you have your typical like waving gun in front of you while you're running. Everything looked nice. You could see like there's little digital readouts on the guns. You can read those. I don't know that you necessarily need this for next gen, but it would definitely make the environments a lot more expansive and a lot prettier. Definitely. Um, and I guess another question, I guess, what is the replay value? Is this something that you need to own? Is this something that, you know, because remember when you went on and on and on about Titanfall when that came out, would this could could this knock Titanfall off the top right now? Because Titanfall right now, in everyone's eyes, is probably the best FPS right now because it did bring it max law. But would this be the one that's going to be a good rival against the Call of Duty franchise, which is a good example? I don't think so. Um, the game still very much feels like Halo. Being that it's made by Bungie, that's not surprising. But I don't, I don't think it's even on the same playing field as like Titanfall or Call of Duty. Uh, they did add like one of the things that I got towards the end was you got a jetpack, and you could like launch yourself up in the air, much like you could in Titanfall. But it didn't feel the same. Uh, the jumping feels like way too fluid uh, I don't yeah I just I don't think it'll I don't think it's going to be the same Titanfall brought a lot more realism realism to it than this is ever going to bring yeah um, I think there's just a lot that uh, Titanfall really brought to the table and now Titanfall the sequel is actually going to be a multi-console which is going to be a lot better um, so, what's your final impression of Destiny, I guess I would ask? Final impression is, with the beta, I was impressed. Uh, I did like it. I do think it's going to be fun. Um, I can see it being one of those games that I play for a while and then kind of get bored of, though. Um, if you get it for Xbox One or 360, you're going to run into the Xbox Live issue, which is what I've run into. Um, if you're going to get it, I would say PlayStation or, or PS3 or PS4, just because it is an online-only game. So, unless you're willing to shell out the money for Xbox Live every month, P PlayStation's the way to go. And that's a lot of things that a lot of people were very... A lot of people questioned that because... Uh, when it comes down to Xbox, I guess that's the biggest kryptonite they have. And mind you, Xbox has done a great job in having a secure network. So, whereas PlayStation had the infamous hack of 2011, which has never been forgotten. <laughs> we all got um, for that one. Yeah, well. Um, but basically, from what I've been reading about, De everything has been a lot about Destiny. I've watched a lot of gameplay footage. I have a lot of people on my uh, Facebook and on my, on my friends list on PS4. And there's just a lot of people ranting and raving about Destiny. But... It kind of, to me, from the outside looking in, just looks like another FPS. It doesn't look like it's going to be anything that stands out. Um, it's kind of like when they said, uh, like, uh, what was it, uh, Call of Duty is going to be the best FPS of all time. But I've played a lot of FPSs that were better in some in some respects than Call of Duty. Um like, Medal of Honor actually has a decent storyline, it's just no one likes Medal of Honor anymore. And that's just, that's just sad, or, like, I mean, ideally for the longest time people play Call of Duty just for the online multiplayer, but then you have Battlefield that completely capitalizes in the online multiplayer, so, I mean, you, you can't really say that no FPS has a good shot. I just think that FPS games now are now a dime a dozen, 
And it's frustrating because it takes away from the couch co-op and no one can sit down with their friend and play a game anymore. Which means yeah. you both know. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think... I, I don't see any, like, um, same room capabilities with Destiny either. And that's the sad part. And I think a lot of the game developers got away from that because they think it's not marketable. Because, obviously... If you own the game and your buddy comes over and plays the game, there's only one copy being purchased, whereas if it's a first person, you everyone has to own a copy. Like, it makes sense financially, but at the same time, though, it kind of hurts the market, too, when, you know, what if your buddy can't afford the game? Like, I mean, look how long it took for Call of Duty, was it Black Ops 1 to come down in price? Yeah. It took it's forever. Still, it's still, I've gone and looked for a copy, and you're still looking at 30 bucks minimum. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, this was definitely a little bit enlightening. Um, One cool thing I will say, and, uh, I I mean, for all of us, you know, geeky people out there, these Star Wars references in this game are rampant. Um, You you control a little ghost thing that kind of gives you directions as you're driving around and and running around. When you pull it up, it sounds like R2-D2. Uh... When you go cruising around on the level, you can contact or you can summon a vehicle. It looks like the land speeders. Like, there's so many things in this game that are like, hey, that's from Star Wars. Now, that's pretty cool. All right, Rick. Any last things before we wrap this up? Uh, no, I, I, I am, I'm excited. I'm not super excited, but I will definitely get a copy in... Uh, We'll let you know how the actual game goes once once we get past the uh, beta phase. Nice. All right, Rick, you go ahead and close this one. All right, sounds good. Well, thanks for listening again. Uh, it's good to be back, finally, with a good connection so that I'm not dropping out every two minutes. But, uh, again, thanks for listening to our pod, and uh, enjoy your chimichangas. Game over, man. It's game over. Thanks for listening to the Droids You Are Looking For podcast. Stay tuned for next week's podcast. Remember, the Force will be with you always.